housing bubble that went bust. So many American homes worth so That's much less. the millions less of homeowners being squeezed in this financial crisis. And With the housing market slowing, foreclosure rates are on the rise. As banks right now, took back one, about 30,000 homes last month. That's a 4 percent Desperate two, times for the families who no longer have a place to call home. The worst of the foreclosure crisis passed years ago. But for some of those who lost their homes, it never really ended. Almost a decade later, they're still trying to fend off the Portland Water Bureau, who sent them to collections for unpaid water and sewer bills that built up after the banks forced them to leave. I was living the dream. I was making great money. I bought a house on Hayden Island in a gated community. We were the youngest couple on the, on the block. It was awesome. And um, it was awesome until 2008 came around. John Laird took a beating in the housing crisis. I mean, it was bad. Business dried up at work. He couldn't pay the mortgage. So the bank told him to get out. It was terrible. I mean, I, I never dreamt that would happen to me, but it did. And um, when I got the eviction notice, which was so humiliating, seeing that thing taped on my front door, all my neighbors, <sighs> sign was on the wall, you know, dreams over, dude. So John shut off the water, the phone, the power. He called the utilities to let them know he needed to cancel service, then sent the keys to the bank and moved out. But life didn't get any easier. We're getting to that part of my life that, that was the worst episode a guy could go through. John suffered a health crisis. He was broke, and his marriage fell apart. During the divorce separation period, I found myself living out of my Yukon in a twin bed with my dog. And all through this time of crisis, the Portland Water Bureau never stopped billing him. John didn't live there anymore and didn't use the water at his old house, but he was still being charged for it because the bank delayed foreclosure and hadn't removed his name from the title. The farthest thing from my mind was a stupid water bill. The Portland Water Bureau sent John to a private collection agency called Ray Klein, Inc. And in the fall of 2017, Ray Klein sued John in small claims court, seeking almost $2,000 for that old water bill. But John fought back. I got a letter in the mail about a month later saying that the, that the case was dismissed in court. And I just say, all right, it's all behind me. I don't have to think about that crummy time in my past. I just figured since it was dismissed in, in Multnomah County Court that it, it was over with. Was it? No. Surprise, surprise. Two years later, the collection agency, Ray Klein, sued again over the same $2,000 bill. The Portland Water Bureau just wouldn't let it go. They're wasting time, they're wasting energy, they're wasting money, and they, they took a, a huge toll on me personally, mentally, to have to relive the crappiest four-year period of my life. You think this case is all that unique? It's probably not unique in that he's one of many people who are hounded to pay debts that they don't owe to the city. Michael Fuller is an attorney. He helped John sue for unlawful debt collection. The case against Ray Klein settled out of court, and as a result, John doesn't owe anymore. But it raises an interesting question. Why is the city going after victims of the foreclosure crisis trying to collect on years-old utility bills? I mean, shouldn't the banks have to pay? They had the keys. And so that just seems to be how it goes. Uh, the large banks get bailed out and the consumers are left to deal with the consequences. I found this very issue has come up before. All right, uh, we'll begin In 2012, regular. the city council passed an ordinance in response to the foreclosure crisis. It gave the Water Bureau the ability to go after banks that took possession of homes but delayed foreclosure. We do have mechanisms in place to be able to move forward and send that debt to now the owner of that property. Have you used it? We have, and we will continue to as long as we can identify that there's a case for it. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge, explained the Water Bureau. Identifying who's on the hook for water and sewer charges on distressed property. Because as it stands now, the Water Bureau relies on property records, whose name is on the title. We don't have a way to find out that a house has been foreclosed on unless a customer calls us. So 
there's no mechanism in place that requires a bank to tell us at a certain time. So it's extremely important that as soon as things start heading in that direction, give us a call. The Water Bureau claims if customers can provide a copy of an eviction notice or a photo of a lockbox, it'll help prove the bank has taken possession of a home. Then the bank can be held responsible for the bill, which is fine going forward. But how about all those people evicted during the foreclosure crisis? They were never told to gather evidence. And now, years later, these former homeowners are stuck, fighting off a private collection agency and lawsuits over water bills accrued after the bank forced them out.